Okay, so the last time we had one of these readings, I read the opening to a novella, I finished, I'd been shopping around. The following summer, I got a contract with a small publishing house, and the year after that, it came out. Small promo if anyone wants a bookmark, or I brought one author copy that I could definitely give away. If more than one person wants it, we'll roll dice. Is there a second one coming? <laughs> yeah, okay, and I am reading. <laughs> I just signed a contract for the sequel. This will be the opening of the second novella in this series. And it's called Fire for Two. And I think at least two or three of you read this one. It's the, the lead character from this book, her best friend, who appears in this book briefly. Okay, so Fire for Two, Chapter One. Iona pushed the flame across her palm. Another mental nudge, and it twirled in a lazy circle. Now something else, Dr. Troy said, flipping through Iona's chart. Iona concentrated on the flame until it grew, split into five, and sent each flame zipping to a fingertip. She let them dance there for a bit, then put them out one at a time. Just because the exam room was fireproof didn't mean Iona wanted to risk burning up all the oxygen on this level. Basement and sub-basement didn't have the best ventilation, no matter what they said. The doc just hummed and tore a piece of paper from her clipboard and placed it on the table. Burn the center. Not very specific. Iona aimed heat in a perfect circle. The paper blackened and caught flame. When the circle, perfectly round but slightly off center, was burned out, she extinguished the fire. Once Dr. Choi leaned over to make her notes, Iona sent more heat to burn out all but a neat one inch border from the page. Or is this what you meant? <laughs> Show off. Either was acceptable. Dr. Choi took a glass from the room's mini fridge, placed it on the table. Three ice cubes clinked against the sides of the glass. Melt only the center cube. Okay, it'll melt the others if it takes too long. Iona focused on the one ice cube, making a thin beam of air just warm enough to heat the center of the ice. The cube folded in on itself, the liquid flowing around the bottom, but still solid ice cube. Dr. Choi tapped her notes. Admirable control. I think we have enough for a baseline. Up to 16 hours and your control is nearly perfect. After that, it decreases slowly for another 10 hours. After 26 hours, it falls apart. She checked her notes. It's been six hours since your last orgasm. You'll be fine to make a quick field mission. Report to Morrison for details. This is an adult doll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all ready? I'm hopped off the stool. So a real mission or another test? We're shorthanded. He asked for you. Are you ready? All charged up. And Anna held out her hands as if the heat she controlled was visible. Quick means just a few hours, right? I don't need to pack a bag. You know as well as I do what can happen. Take what you think you'll need for double the time you might be out. Iona stopped at her quarters on the medical level. Real shoes instead of med-level slippers. A jacket in case of rain. A mini vibrator in case she was out past that 26-hour deadline. Her phone, fully charged for a change. All set. Her phone chimed as she waited for the elevator. She slid her thumb across the screen. Text from Morrison telling her where to meet. It's first floor. Morrison, tall, broad, and dark, sat alone at a table with two open chairs when she entered. Welcome back, Sinclair. Solo mission? Morrison tapped a finger on the table. He's late. Medical says you're okay in the field as long as you take precautions. He focused his gaze on her. You have those precautions in hand? She nodded. Without giggling, Doc would be proud of her. Good, Morrison continued. Sven sucks at punctuality, but I'd like him back unburnt. He waited until she nodded again, then pointed at one of the chairs across from him. As she sat, he asked, are you up to date on current events? Sven, only one agent by that name, infamous for his good looks and charming personality. Guess you don't mean basketball scores, she shrugged. Local news, some amp, amp news filtered in downstairs. More reports on rogues, maybe an organized group? That's, is that why we're shorthanded? Bits and pieces of various conversations popped into her mind. Amps who didn't want to be regulated, pheno amps who didn't want to live in the gated communities away from the normals all people the Bureau had to deal with. We're not shorthanded, just busy. Everyone's got an assignment and we need every able-bodied agent out there in the field. A tall blonde man swung the door open and joined them. 
Morrison was broad-shouldered, but Sven was straight from central casting for a Viking flick. Morrison pointedly checked the time. You're late. Iona, Sven is back up in your liaison with base this mission. Sven, she'll take point. He pointed behind, closed the door. Sven got back up, pressed the door shut with a click. He sat in an open chair with a grin for Iona. Robes again? Morrison switched on the projector. A map blossomed on the wall. Sven scraped his chair around to face it. This is their target, the city's last uncovered water reservoir. Sven raised his hand. This where I ask again why they haven't covered it yet? Time and money, same as always. Morrison circled the reservoir with his laser pointer. The rogues are getting organized. They've sent a demand that the public bureau publicly announced by 1,700 hours or they'll freeze the city water supply. A manipulator amp calls himself Q will be there to freeze the water. We don't know whether they think they can freeze the whole thing solid or whether they just want to burst the pipes. He set down the pointer. It won't shut down all the city's water, but it'll make noticeable drops in our levels. We'd rather the good citizens not be inconvenienced. Most importantly, we don't give in to terrorist demands. Iona raised her hand. How much backup will Cube have? We don't know for sure. There's a really good chance this is a distraction for something bigger going on. We have other teams in position for the most likely of those. Expect him and at least one other, but there could be more. Sinclair, your primary job is to keep the water liquid. Only tackle the rogues if you can manage it in addition to the water. Sven, your communication and muscle, but any short-circuiting of their brains would be appreciated. Iona praised Sven. He'd been in a recruitment class, but they never worked a mission together. A mental strong enough to block or mess up someone else wasn't that common. You'd think she'd have heard about him by now. The Bureau rumor mill usually covered all bases. Morrison put both hands on the table. Any questions? Is there an image of the Manny? Iona asked. Here. Morrison flipped the projector to another picture. Go now. A car's been... Okay, if I drive? He asked. I know a shortcut. Fine by me. Can we stop for dinner? He stabbed the elevator button. A couple diners on the way back, along the shortcut. Anything's fine. She tugged her shoulder pack back into place. Will your shortcut get us there ahead of the bad guys? They entered the empty elevator. The way I drive it will. <laughs>